Class work. Let us, let us know. Right now? Yeah. Class work, Class work. very important. Yeah. Do you work? Yeah. Get good grades. Don't do drugs. Don't do it. <laughs> Hello. Today I will be talking about multiplying and dividing rational expressions. Um, mainly simplifying them as well. So we'll start off with a few examples. Um, also, finding the domain. And the only thing you have to look at when you're finding domain is first domain restrictions. Well, there are two types of domain restrictions. One, you can't have a negative under a square root. And two, you can't divide by zero. Because we know a number divided by zero is undefined. All right, so when you're graphing, if it's undefined, this is also known as a vertical asymptote. All right, so that's good to know. So we're uh, simplifying this and finding the domain. Whenever you're simplifying, you have to factor these things first. So to factor this, we look at what they have in common, because this we know these two have a greatest common factor, 3 and 21. 3 goes into both of those. So we can take out 3, we have x plus 7 left. The opposite of distributing, so when you factor, you divide to see what goes inside. 3x, if we take out a 3, we're left with x. 21 divided by 3 leaves us with 7. Here, the greatest common factor is x. So we can take out an x from both because Looking at what they have in common, they both have an x. Take out an x, we have x plus 7 left. And then to simplify this, we can cancel these out. And we're just going to be left with 3 over x. Alright, so that's a simplified form. But the domain is a little bit different. You have to look at the original problem for the domain. What numbers can and can't I plug into this? All right. Uh, so since we know we're not allowed to divide by zero, we have to think, okay, what's going to make this zero? So our domain for this problem, x is not allowed to be zero, because if we plug in zero, we get a number divided by zero, and x is not allowed to be, well, what number plus seven is zero? Negative seven. So that's the domain of this thing. You can't look at just your simplified version because it matters what makes the original function zero on the bottom as well. So next one, since we're thinking about factoring, we have t squared minus 16. So when you factor something difference of squares, all it is is the square root of 16 is four, so we get t plus four and t minus 4, so that's that factored over. For the bottom one, we can make an x. We need two numbers that multiply to equal the last number that add up to the middle number. So we need two things that multiply to equal 16 that add up to negative 8. That would be negative 4 and negative 4. So these are what go down here. So we have t minus 4, t minus 4. Alright, now this is where we're going to get our domain from, because we can't really see what the domain is uh, going to be from here. You have to factor it first. Well, we factored it, now we can simplify it by canceling out what we know can cancel out. We know these can cancel, and we're left with t plus 4 over t minus 4. So that's the simplified version, t plus 4 over t minus 4. But remember, we are looking at both of these for the domain, so our domain, for number two, well, they happen to be the same thing anyways, t minus four and t minus four. So they give us the same domain restriction. t is not allowed to be four, because four minus four would give us zero on the bottom. So t, not allowed to be four. That's our domain. It could be every other number, just not four. Next one, we have to factor both of these. So for the top, draw an x. Two numbers that multiply to equal 4, so we need multiply to equal 4 that add up to 5. Well, that's easy. Uh, 4 times 1 is 4. 
and 4 plus 1 is 5. So these are our two numbers, positive 4 and positive 1. So the first one, or the top, factors into x plus 4, x plus 1, over. We have to do the same for the bottom. We need two numbers that multiply to equal negative 9 to add up to negative 8. And you can think about your factors, 3 times 3 multiplies to give us 9, but it won't add up to 8. So we need 9 and 1. Just got to figure out the signs now. Is it going to be 9 and negative 1 or 1 and negative 9? Since it adds up to negative 8, it's 1 and negative 9. So these go down here. x minus 9, x plus 1. So that's where domain comes from. We can cancel out what we can. Boom, boom, those go away. So our simplified version, x plus 4 over x minus 9. So our domain would be x is not allowed to be 9, because 9 minus 9 would make 0 here. So x is not equal to 9, or you can just write a comma x is not allowed to be negative 1, because negative 1 plus 1 would be 0 there. So you can write it that way too. Alright, next we are simplifying when multiplying two rational expressions. So we have a fraction times a fraction. Um, just like with regular fi fractions, you can multiply straight across. I think that's the best way to deal with these first. So we have here. 5a cubed times 7b cubed, 5 times 7 is 35. Uh, a cubed, b cubed, you just have to leave. Can't do anything with that right now. Then we have 3b times 10a to the 7th, 3 times 10 is 30. a to the 7th, it's good to write in alphabetical order, b. So, from here, We have 35 and 30. We can reduce both of those by 5. So we divide by 5 for both, top and bottom. So here we're going to get 7 over 6. Okay, 7 over 6. And when we're dividing terms with exponents, we subtract them. So here we have a to the 3 minus 7. That's going to give us a to the negative 4 b to the 3 minus 1, which is 2. And then finally, um, we know we have to flip negative exponents to make them positive, because that's how we're used to looking at them. So the negative exponent is going to go down with the 6, and the positive exponent is going to stay up top with the 7. So we have finally 7b squared over 6a to the 4th. Next. First thing you want to do is factor everything you can. If you can factor something, do it. All right. So here, and at the same time, we can make this one big fraction. This multiplication sign doesn't really matter. You don't have to do anything with it. Just make it one big fraction, and consider yourself multiplying everything. Okay. So we can factor 8x minus 16. Um, 8 goes into both of these, so we can take out an 8. And if we take out an 8, 8x divided by 8 leaves us with x minus 16 divided by 8 is 2. Um, um, x cubed is going to stay there for now. You can put it up front with the 8. 8x cubed times x minus 2, that's fine. And then we have 5x times... 5x minus 10. Here, we could take out a 5. So we're going to take that out. We're going to multiply it with the 5x, because right now it's multiplying anyways. If we take out a 5, it's still going to be multiplying, and we're left with x minus 2. So we're not finding domain this time, we're just simplifying these. So we can cancel out what we know we can cancel out. The x minus 2s, same on top and bottom. Those will go away. We do have three x's up here and one down here. So we're, we are subtracting, but you can think of it as canceling too. 
There's one x down here, so we cancel one of each of these. So that's going to become a 2. So we're going to be left with 8 x squared over 5 times 5 is 25. Thumbs down. And the last one, probably a little bit more difficult because we have a harder type of factoring here. So let's think of all of these separately for right now. 7a minus 14. That's just the greatest common factor problem. We know we can take out a 7, and we're going to have a minus 2 left. Here, difference of squares, 4 minus a squared factors into 2 plus a, 2 minus a. This one's going to be the tough one, so we'll leave that for last. This one, we could take out a 7 from 35 and 7, and we're going to be left with 5a plus 1. Now here, we're going to have to use the ac method. All right? So let's do that to the side, or down here. We have 5a squared plus 6a plus 1. I'll rewrite it down here. If we're factoring this, we're using the AC method, or you can, you could use whatever method you want. So draw an X. A times C goes in the top, 5A squared times 1. So 5A squared. We need two things that multiply to equal the top that add up to 6A, the middle. Alright? Well, that's easy. That's just 5 and 1. 5A and A. And they're both positive. So we take those, replace our middle term. Um, so it's going to be 5a squared plus 5a plus a plus 1. Factor by grouping. You could take a 5a out of these guys. So we'll have 5a, a plus 1 plus 1, we could take out of these guys, and we have a plus 1. So the final factored form of that, I'll write it right above here, is 5a. Everything on the outside goes in 1, 5a plus 1, and everything on the inside of the parentheses, a plus 1, goes in the other one. So let's rewrite this over here. Everything becomes 7 a minus 2 over 2 plus a, 2 minus a. Times, and you don't even really need the times, um, 5a plus 1, a plus 1. Over 7, 5a plus 1. Now start canceling things. So the hard part's over. You just look at what you have in common on the top and bottom. We have two sevenths. Those cancel. 5a plus 1 cancels. Uh, we have an a minus 2 and a 2 minus a. Those aren't exactly the same, but if we factor out a negative, we can flip these around. So those will cancel. You just got to make the outside negative. And then that'll do it. That'll be it. Our answer, whatever's left. On the top, we have a plus 1. On the bottom, we have negative 2 plus a, or a plus 2. does not matter if you flip those around. Same thing. All right. And the last one I want to do. Um, first things first. When you're dividing, a fraction by a fraction, it's best to think keep change flip. Or when you're dividing by a fraction, multiply by the reciprocal. But most people know it by keep change flip. So we'll do that first. We keep the first fraction, change the sign to multiply, and then we flip the last fraction. So we have t cubed minus 1 over t squared plus 4t minus 5. That has not changed. Times, change the sign to multiply, and then flip this one. So it's going to be t plus 5 
over t squared plus t plus 1. Um, first, to factor this, we need to know how to factor a cubic. Um, there is a certain formula. We know a cubed minus b cubed will factor into a minus b, which are just the cube roots, and then a squared plus ab plus b squared. So that's our formula we're using where a is just going to be the cube root of t cubed, which is t, and b is the cube root of 1, which is 1. So we know from here that's going to become t minus 1 times, just using the formula, if a is t, we have t squared minus, actually plus, t times 1 is t, plus 1, over. We can factor this by doing the same thing we're used to. Two numbers that multiply to equal negative 5 that add up to 4. All right? So multiply to equal negative 5 that add up to 4. That would be 5 and negative 1. So those are our factors. So we have t plus 5. t minus 1. So we can already see something's going to cancel out here. Times t plus 5. Don't really have to do much here. t squared plus t plus 1. Now we see we could try and factor this bottom one, but it's actually not factorable. But we do see we can cancel it out with what we got here. So those are going to cancel. Boom, boom, gone. t plus 5 cancels. And then t minus 1 cancels as well. So we everything cancels. When everything cancels, you have to think, OK, well, something divided by itself is 1. So really, we have 1 times 1 times 1. So if everything cancels, you just get 1. That would be the answer. And that's all I have for today.